Well, hi, welcome back again, everyone. So today we're going to play another short indie horror game. This one is called Sandoval Incident 44. This is another game from Aza Game Studio. This is their second game in the Incident Tape series. Um, so an urban explorer enters the Sandoval Tuberculosis Sanitarium to film and document the area. The facility was used in the past to house tuberculosis patients back in 1944. Remnants of trauma and death still linger in the air as many torture, torturous events and incidents at the building went unseen. So, you know, more of the same. We're going to explore an abandoned location with our little VHS camera. We're going to learn some story. We're going to get spooked. So get ready to get scared. Okay? Alright, September 12th, 1999, we are getting brave. Alright, that's the way up. Oh, that's, oh, that's just a dead end. Okay. Ugh. As usual, we have a dingy, busted, disgusting building. What the frick? Is that like a slug just walk across my... Or, crawl across my camera, perhaps? What's this? I can't read that. Was Julie's uh, patient number 65821. They've upped my dosage of Famfen combined with Isoniazid and Ethambutol. The doctors have told me if I am lucky, I should be out of here in nine months. I am thankful for the help I have been provided. I can't wait to get back home and sleep in a normal bed. This place feels like a never-ending loop of the same events, repeating and repeating. I long for the day in which I can finally travel back home to my friend. Okay, so that was just... Are we really doing the mannequin thing? Like... Oh my god. Just made my whole face itchy. So, for those that don't know... I can't. And as soon as I'm done being irritated that there are mannequins in this, I'm going to go back to being scared. Stamping out, TB. Stomping out tuberculosis is the utmost and most important thing for the future of the city of Sanival. We've been taking action and precautions towards keeping the spread at bay. Furthermore, the new Sanival sanitarium, sanitarium has space for many patients with plans of future expansion and more floors added to the building. Okay, so that was fancy lightning just now. So, you know, a good mission, to say the least. Okay, why did I want to remove those? Oh, we're going to wait a moment before we go wherever that is. Three ways to fight tuberculosis. I can't read that, so I guess we don't get to know. Alright, Curiosity may have killed the cat, and it just might kill me too, but I gotta know why. Hello? Why this was accessible. Who the hell put a bed outside for a tuberculosis patient? Tornado coming. Oh, well, I guess, I guess not. So this was nothing over this way. Oh Jesus! What do you want? That's where we were. Oh, okay. All right. Bitches. So is there anything down here? Outside? Okay, so what was the point of Did you did you put this here just so that I had to walk extra so I could be scared? Extra? Extra extra? 
Hey, whoever's banging shit around, stop that. And you, I'm fucking watching you. Don't get any funny ideas. God, I wish I had a flashlight or night vision or something. I mean, the lightning flashes are great for momentary illumination. No one is safe. No one is safe from the disease known as tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is one of the world's most deadly diseases. Every day, hundreds, thousands of people, hey, lose their lives to this horrible disease. The disease usually affects the lungs in 90% of cases with symptoms of coughing, hemoptosis, chest pain, shortness of breath, fever, weight loss, respiratory failure, and ultimately leading to an early death for people of all ages. We must all be vigilant fighting this disease and avoid close contact to reduce the spread. Dr. Benjamin Vanakut of Sanival Sanitarium has said he is at the forefront of lung surgery for those severely affected and he will save as many lives as he possibly can. By the way, when I was reading the symptoms here, I had like flashbacks, you know, not for, you know, my own personal uh, experience, but because you always see those commercials for medications and it's like possible side effects include and it like does everything <laughs> cheers everything including death prevent disease careless spitting coughing sneezing spread influenza and tuberculosis take part in America's crusade against tuberculosis Fight tuberculosis. Obey the rules of health. Okay. It's just a picture. My goodness. But anyways. Prior to them throwing a wheelchair down the stairs at me and scaring the shit out of me with the dude just popping up in my face. That's what I was thinking about was those commercials because it's just like comical that you have a medication with all these horrendous side effects, including death. Uh, oh, I don't think I'll be staying for dinner. No, no, thank you. I mean, if you really want me to stay, I mean, I guess, but just for dinner. What is that sound? And why is it getting faster? Uh uh. Uh uh. Hey, you! Are we watching a film? I love to watch films. What do we got? I don't know these people. Is, is, did I miss it? The Philadelphia Health Council, the Philadelphia General Hospital, and many other friends. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. oh. 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 out here for a moment. I'm going to take a drink. <laughs> An enemy. Its name is tuberculosis. Alright, alright. Enough of the propaganda footage. I say propaganda, not saying, like, tuberculosis wasn't real. I'm just saying, like, the, the presentation of it feels... God dang! I'm gonna tell you what, you, you people up in here... For, tuber for tuberculosis victims, you sure got some, some zoom energy. Oh. What do we got here? Julie's Diary, page four, patient number eight, uh, six, five, eight, two, one. It has, been, it has now been eight months since I arrived here. The tuberculosis has now spread to both of my lungs. I am having a hard time to even catch my breath. The doctors are preparing me for surgery as I sit in this wheelchair and try to get some fresh air on the balcony. 
Hmm. So did they lie to Julie, or was the tuberculosis just too powerful? journey upwards keep your teeth clean <laughs> I like it's like are we on the top floor we'll come back to that door I just want to take a pinky but hello Key. It requires a key. What? Does this also require a key? It does not, but oh man, is it. Is it Yuck City in here or what? And not just because it's a bathroom. Ha ha ha. Anything in the toilet? Unlock your mind. Huh? Oh. Oh! That, I, I love to keep my skulls in the toilet as well. Uh, what's this? Julie's Diary, page 5, patient number 65821. It has now been almost nine months since I arrived here. Surgery is due, but I'm considering fleeing this place. There are rumors of the doctors injecting us with some newly developed drug. Also, I've been seeing a hallucination of a trench coat wearing disfigured man. I am so physically weak, I can barely make it to the bathroom. I feel that this is it. <laughs> there was... <clears throat> there was the trench coat guy. I can barely make it to the bathroom. Oh, I feel that this is it. This is the place that I will die. But I must get the truth out. Benjamin, Vanekut, and Hans have been experimenting on us. They are keeping stuff from us, possibly due to financial gain or sick fantasies. Consider this final note. My eternal goodbye. Well, Julie. Hope you made it out. What the fuck? Sorry. Uh, whoever you are. I needed that. For probably selfish reasons. All right, Hans. All right, Vanekut. I'm here to take you down. Oh. Oh, dear. Uh, 100,000 cases of tuberculosis. Once again, the spreading of tuberculosis in the city of Sanibal soars to new highs, as these past few months have seen an increase upwards to 200,000 in the city of Sanibal. In other news, further investigation into an ongoing lawsuit towards Sanibal Sanitarium continues. There are rumors about an insider with knowledge as to what started the fire in the kitchen. The rumors tell of the incident being intentionally caused, as well as one patient disappearing permanently on the night of the fire. The other patients have been talking about visions of a disfigured tall man wearing a trench coat and a hook. They say he roams the halls at night looking for people to kidnap into the forest. Some even claim he was the same patient that started the fire. In the process, and then escaped, but something must have brought him back. This could all just very well be side effects and hallucinations from pharmaceutical drugs. This is all for the week. For this week. That is all for this week. I, you know... I think... It's probably... What? Oh, can we go further up? I didn't see that stair there before. I was going to say it's probably time for us to leave, but... Ooh, the moonlight is so beautiful tonight.
it something to do with this, or...? No? Okay, well... Is this a body over here? Let's take a closer look. Oh, I'm gonna read first. <clears throat> Published 1944, Incident 44, the closure of Sanival Sanitarium. The spread of tuberculosis is now out of control, with upwards of 500,000 new cases a day. The facility is being sued for multiple costs, cases of fraud, experimentation on patients with drugs, and terrible living conditions being hidden away from officials. Benjamin Vanicut has been accused of torture ring and experimenting on patients. A woman named Julie has spoken out in hope of the media picking up on this. Furthermore, missing people reports have begun have been increasing around the area since the building caught on fire in the kitchen area in 1939. Patients have been experiencing nightmares for years on end of <clears throat> on end of a disfigured trench coat wearing hook wielding tall man. Many say that this is just a phenomena and side effect of normal treatment, similar to how our brains are coded to seeing faces in everything, and similar to how some see shadow people when heavily medicated. Nonetheless, with all these things combined, the facility has been forced to shut down as the long-pending lawsuit won over Sanibal Sanitary. So basically, bad people did bad shit. Bad, and really bad things happen. Ooh, take a closer look. This is insane. Who murdered all these people? That's all. That's, that's me taking a closer look. Anything over here? Take a shower. Wash off that TV. Huh. What? Hello? Where the hell did I come up? Over here. Okay. Yeah, you know, I feel... Oh, no. Things are changing down there. Great. I was just gonna say, I think it's time... Oh, shit! <laughs> To leave. I was gonna say it was time for us to leave. Oh, boy, ending one of six. Six endings? Holy sha sha sha. Reasons of madness. A tape was recovered from Senate Ball Sanitarium. The content within the tape shows a urban explorer's last moments before being brutally murdered by a disfigured trench coat wearing man. The person who found the tape was unable to locate the body of the victim. However, he himself was also an urban explorer, and he dug through old documents found on the surgery floor. These documents and pictures revealed that the murderer was a former patient who disappeared shortly after the fire accident in the kitchen back in 1939, which he in fact started himself to get vengeance on Benjamin Vanicut, who had been secretly torturing him during his tuberculosis treatment. The fire made him horribly disfigured, and the event backfired on himself. He found an abandoned cabin in the forest, and lived there meanwhile, snatching people from the sanitarium throughout the years. The facility closed down in 1944, and has since been abandoned. Police have been informed, and the building is set for demolition in the near future. Alright, so that was Sanoval Incident 44, and in case you hadn't noticed, some of these are kind of like story time with Kyle. So, uh, I hope you don't mind me just talking a whole lot, but... This one, once again, atmosphere, they throw random, random stupid jump scares at you, just like a person's face pops up in front of you, and half the time it's when I'm trying to read what's like a good two or three paragraph, like, news story or something. But, um, yeah, so this was the second uh, game in the Incident Tape series. Um, there are two to go, I will be playing those for you shortly. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying these. I enjoy these games just because it tells a short, quick story. The atmosphere is always solid, and I get smacked with jump scares that I should I should see them coming by now. I really should, but I just don't. Been doing this for a long time now, and it just never. I, I'm just never going to adjust ever. So I hope you guys enjoy my uh, fearful game playing, and I hope that you are also scared because that's what this is all about. But on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching, and stick around for more because it's coming soon. So until next time, later.